Hello dear viewers, we are currently located in uh, Bristol on one of the many hills in this city and we are walking uphill to find the nearest kebab shop. I don't know what uh, the name of the kebab shop is nor I did any research beforehand so this is kind of an improvised episode but uh, we will see what we will get. You can see typical Bristol around me. Uh, lots of traffic, lots of parked cars, narrow road, graffiti everywhere. And uh, oh, there is one of the electric scooters right there. Uh, these electric scooters are doing a trial in Bristol uh, you need to download an app install it and then you can rent it either for a short ride or you can take a day pass or you can uh, even get a monthly pass I think they are uh, great fun to ride so if you're ever around here I can definitely recommend it it's a lot more faster and efficient than waiting for a bus and uh, if you're a tourist doing a lot of sightseeing, it's actually a lot better financially for you as well. So here we are, these are these electric scooters. I know this is a kebab channel, but uh, you can just see my friend Nicola here. He will demonstrate how to use it. We will uh, try to scan the app. Uh, sorry, scan the QR code, which is right here, and then uh, that's how you unlock the scooter, and then you're free to ride it. You just scan the code first, then they will ask you to verify. Ah, it is. Oh, this is a really old photo. You can see a bit more of Bristol here. On Bristol, you're pretty much always on some kind of a hill. And here is somebody who's just returning a scooter. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, know. Uh, I'm just trying to verify my account first. Yeah, it should take a few minutes. Mm, yeah. yeah, let's go. Uh, but later we'll try. Uh, so now we are waiting for him to get uh, his account verified. And in the meantime we can find a kebab. Kebab, kebab shop, where are you? I seriously thought that there is a kebab shop somewhere closer here. But anyway, why not do a bit of sightseeing? Not that there is much to see anyway, so we are in a residential district. Well, who knows? We located a fish and chip shop, which may or may not have kebabs in store. Oh, well, let's see. They have. They have kebabs. Okay. Let's go. So, okay, I'm gonna get a large lamb donor for me. One large number, right? Yeah. Anything else? Same. Same. Two large large. Mm -hmm. You want to get a pair or a separate? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yes, uh, garlic and chili sauce. can get mix of all salads and the uh, sauce garlic and chili uh, that's it uh, can we get a fork to eat outside Thank you, that's great. Okay, so this was fish and chips. That's it, just fish and chips. Okay. Now we need to find some place where we can eat this and uh, measure it, of course. Okay, so we found a place called Rodney Road Playing Field and uh, this looks like a decent place to review a kebab There is a bench over there, another bench there So that should be good enough for us to weigh the kebabs And then of course any bench really is good enough to review the taste um, I suppose this is supposed to be children's football field No idea the Very small goals Oh, we have some parkour <laughs> In this episode He's gonna do some exercise and then he's gonna replenish his strength with a kebab There's another one here Whoa! <laughs> Is it too tall? They should be the same height They should be the same height to ensure the fairness of the game It is not the cleanest of the benches Mm. Just enough shit for <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should... Uh, I think it was not the cleanest of the benches So we should uh, maybe try that one over there Which is not underneath the tree Because trees are full with birds And uh, we know what the birds like to do on benches Here is the scale our trusty scale Whoop. Unstable Okay, I need to use the floor, I guess Oof. Are you stable now? Yes, you are stable okay. First we can measure the variance since we have two kebabs So the first one is 553 Not that great, plus we are measuring with the paper, which is a couple of grams oh, And the second one oh. oh my god Okay, let's try this 556 
So there's actually very little variance. The way of these two kebabs is uh, very even. Now we're just not sure which kebab is whose. Yeah, that is Nikos. He got three grams more than me. And less sour. So that means a lot more meat. Let's open this up. So this is how it looks like. Um, typical UK kebab, I would say. They don't mix the meat and vegetables, nor the bread. So there's bread at the bottom, then there's multiple layers of meat, and finally there's a layer of vegetables. I cannot see much of the sauces that were put in. I can only see some stains. Oh. Oh. Here's a nice new angle with which hopefully you can actually see what I'm eating. So, this is the Tiozo. <laughs> so, this is the kebab. And uh, the first apparent thing is. So this kebab, like many others in UK, the mixing is left for you to do on your own, rather than the kebab meister mixing in the vegetables with the bread. This makes it very difficult to experience the full palette of flavors that appear in one's mouth when the person eats everything together. Taste-wise, it's, um, it's all right, but uh, I'm not particularly impressed with the taste, to be honest. However, let's eat a bit more of it before we delve into judgment. The feeling I get eating this kebab is that it has been rushed. Now, there wasn't much attention being paid to the amount of ingredients one puts in uh, the blend of sauces etc it just seems that somebody took random amounts of ingredients put them in together and that's it well, the vegetables are okay they are fresh but they're not mixed in properly with the meat so you'll start by eating a salad and only then you'll actually start eating the kebab later with only a bit of leftover vegetables. The meat is okay, but nothing special really. And the only thing I didn't try yet now is the bread. Okay, and I will try to this as if it was all put in a pita bread so let's collect the ingredients the bread is Okay, but not particularly good either. And this cold kebab, I'll give it two stars. It's not a terrible kebab, but um, it's a bit below good, so to say. So the meat is all right. The sauces aren't particularly good. The vegetables are okay, but again, they're not mixed in properly. And the bread is uh, kind of whatever. 
so at 650 this kebab is not particularly large either Now in the defense of the shop, it is called fish and chips, so which is a bit of a my fault as well, I suppose, for doing a kebab there. I'm pretty sure that uh, if you ordered something that is their expertise, like fish and chips, uh, it would taste a lot better. Again, it's not a terrible kebab, but it's not really a good one either. And I suppose the lesson of the day is if you're looking for a kebab, don't enter a fish and chips shop to get one. That was it, a review of fish and chips kebab in Bristol, UK. So that was Samurai's fish and chips shop in Bristol. As the name suggests, they do not consider themselves experts in donor kebabs and that is visible from the 2 out of 5 taste rating. At a price of £6.50 for a 554 gram kebab, the value comes out at 85 grams per pound, firmly below the threshold of 100 grams per pound, so the affordability is not there either. The lesson I suppose is that a fish and chips shop is not an ideal place to order a kebab from. That is all for today, thanks for watching and see you next week in another episode.